Hello my friends, welcome to my channel, The Beloved Way. Today I'm super excited to start sharing my PowerPoint presentation series on traditional Chinese medicine herbs. The reason I'm doing this are for three reasons. Number one is to enhance my own knowledge and knowingness on the herbs. Number two is to help students to review and prepare for exams. And number three is for the general public who are interested in TCM herbs, their functions and their properties. Once again, all my videos are for entertainment and educational purpose only and not to promote or prescribe any medication or herbs. Please seek your professional traditional Chinese doctors to help you with your ailment. The reason being is that TCM, we always look at a person as a holistic whole and each person have their own constitutions and own body types. And so what your traditional Chinese doctor will do for you is they will form a decoction that's a combination of many herbs that will achieve the maximum benefit for you. And each one of them are unique and individualized, so it will help you the most. And I want to thank you for everyone who's watching and thank you for your sharing and subscribing and thank you for your sweet comments. And I will see you in my PowerPoint presentation soon. Thank you and bye-bye. Hello everyone, welcome. Today I'm going to start the PowerPoint presentation series on the Chinese Traditional Medicine Herbology 101. The herbs that I will introduce today are the herbs to drain dampness. The original material for this PowerPoint presentation is from Dr. Gui Li Zhen, and I have modified a little bit and put in my own PowerPoint, and I will be presenting. And this is the beloved Wei, Amy Li Wei. The reference lesson is from a Chinese professor. His name is Professor Yan Jingzhi, and I will include his Chinese version of this video um, in the links below. So I am going over for uh, the herb class that drains dampness from your body. So in the TCM, when you think about draining dampness, you have a lot of edema in your body, you have a swollen and, or you have urination, painful urination issues. Basically what the herbs do is to clear water passage and to enhance the draining of dampness. So uh, TCM is very akin to nature. If you think about in the nature, in the springtime, when you want to plant some new plants down, but the soil is very hard, what do you do? You may drive to Home Depot and borrow one of those soil puncher things to promote the draining of the moisture. So this is what in Chinese word is called tong means to, um, to open the passageway. So you would think instead of forcing the water out, you are leaching or draining the water out, such as those little holes in the soil. So it will moisten the soil and while draining the dampness of water out. So it, again, it's promote urination by leaching out dampness. It acts on the urinary bladder and kidney channels. These two are, all, are water uh, in the TCM5 elements. These are the water channels and also the spleen because spleen trans transforms and transports and those um, have a lot uh, have to do with water passageways. So it treats water dampness retention, edema, phlegm retention, and painful urination and jaundice. So these herbs are in the class. If you look at them, they are typically um, sweet and they are bland. Okay, so any herbs belong to, if you see their property is sweet and bland, the first thing you will think about is it has a leaching out property. So it leach out and called shen, leaching out the dampness from our body and promote urination. So some things like sweet and bland, you could think about as the corn silk in the, the corn husk. So these, if you boil in the water, it's a sweet, and it's very bland. It's not doesn't have a lot of taste, but it has a tinge of sweetness, and that will um, promote urination. Okay, and there are some other herbs that's bitter. So bitter is cold in nature. So if you think about cold drops, right, and heat rises. So basically, the cold in nature it uh, clears the heat from your body and drains down moisture. So force the chi or uh, moisture downward. Okay, so this cause herbs we have to use with some caution and as all herbs and different ones have different properties and have contraindications. So this drains a lot of water. So if your body is already 
um, dehydrated or have depleting uh, water fluid. It can hurt it further by, it's called, you can hurt in deficiency or it can have the depleted body fluids or if you already have scanty urine or if you have kidney deficiency, you need to use with caution. Definitely the Chinese traditional medicine doctor will um, gauge how much, what herbs to give you and how much to give you depending on your own constitution. Also, if you are pregnant and caution need to be taken because um, basically this class of herbs will um, drain and by pulling down. So the force is, like I said, it's downward because it needs to drain the urine down. So if you, it could cause, um, you know, the baby to come out prematurely if it, the chi or everything's pulling it down. However, again, there are a lot of safe herbs in here and the traditional doctors depend if you're pregnant, they will definitely put that into consideration about how much to use and what to use. Okay, so next one is um, I will separate these class into three different groups. Okay, the first group will be reduced edema and swelling. And second group will be help with uh, UTI issues or painful urination issues. And the third group will be helped with uh, jaundice issues. So this is my first group. So this helps with edema and swelling. In this class, we have four herbs. Uh, one is Fuling, okay. Then you have Zuling, you have Zhexie, and you have Yiren. So I'm going to go over one, each of them um, in detail. The first one is Fuling. And Fuling is, uh, you can see it's a three star, it's a very important herb. So uh, I will show you a picture of Fuling. So this is a fooling, okay? So what it does, it is actually a fungus mushroom. It grows uh, next to pine tree. And um, if you can look on the picture, you see the kind of brownish outside, that's the mushroom, okay? And the inside is purely white. So the white in TCM is goes to the lum meridian. So it will go to our lum meridian. And it also conifies our spleen. This is a very good herb and drains dampness. So um, there's a story, how do you find uh, fooling? Fooling is almost like, um, you know, the, the, the wild, wild hogs will uh, basically take fooling. It is very similar to the truffle, but it's not truffle. So the wild hogs will really love fooling and they'll dig it up and make a whole mess, but it will not, get all of them because it sometimes it's very hard to find. So the forester or farmers, basically they'll find the wild hog tracks and find those um, pine trees that they dig at, <clears throat> and then they will harvest the fooling. And so um, again, the fooling has, um, it's a sweet blend. When we see sweet and blend, we know it leaches, drain the moisture down, right? And it's uh, neutral in taste. Okay, it enters, what I said is why, so it enters the lung meridian, also enters the heart and spleen, it tonifies spring. Um, as with all the herbs in this class, it promotes urination, leach out dampness, it tonifies spleen, it calms the spirit. So think about as a function of warm milk before bed. It calms the mind and calms the spirit. Okay, so um, it helps with palpitation and insomnia and also helps with a phlegm and edema due to the stagnation of the fluids and dampness. So uh, again, fooling is, it's called poria mushroom, uh, that, that brown one. And uh, if you look at the fooling, the inside is white. So the white portion, it tonifies the spleen and the red portion, it's the lining of the mushroom. So because it's red, it's like heat, it's more, um, it's more cooling to drain the damp heat. And the fooling P, P here means the skin, the skin of the fooling. Usually in the uh, traditional Chinese herbs, whenever it is skin, you will drain uh, dampness. So this is for the young edema. For, for edema, it'll drain, you know, everything that's of, uh, related to the skin. It's um, most time it's used for uh, drain uh, edema or dampness through urination, okay? The next one is Zuling. 
Zhu Ling is very, very similar to Fu Ling. Zhu here means pig. So, or hog. So as I described before, also the hogs will dig these mushrooms up. And I will show you a photo of this. So this is Zuling. If you look, it's um, kind of like brown fungus, brown mushroom. It also, um, so this one is Zuling. The function is very similar to Fuling. So if you look at the only difference here, remember our Fuling is sweet and bland like before. And here is a difference is slightly cold. So when you see slightly cold, you know it will help with um, called uh, damp heat. Okay, so it will help with, um, if you look at it, the only function here is to promote urination and leach out dampness. So this is cooler in nature. So it will uh, clear damp heat. However, it does not have the function of fooling up tonifying. Fooling have tonifying spleen and calm the spirit, right? Um, in here, the, um, the zuling does not have these two functions, but it is, um, it is stronger than fooling in clear the damp heat because it is a slightly cold. Okay, and it also helps with vaginal discharge and cloudy, painful urination. So next one uh, I'm going to go over is yi yi ren. Again, this is three star. This is very important. This is um, like food as medicine. So it is in the family of pearl barley. And I will show you a photo of yi yi ren. Okay, you can see this is yi yi ren. Okay, so this is uh, pearl, Chinese pearl barley. So this is very important. It has multiple functions and I go and go over again. This is white and immediately you know it goes into our lung meridian, right? It, it, it helps with our lung. So the function of yi yi for the lung, it actually uh, will um, break pus uh, or break cyst uh, for the lung um, cysts. So I will go over this. So again, this is sweet and bland. And it is slightly cold, okay? Just like the zuling. Um, like here. Okay, so it, um, like fooling, it is, it will uh, strengthen the spleen and stop diarrhea. So this, function is similar to fooling, okay? So, and since it's a slightly cold, it will clear heat. The cold, um, the herbs that cold in nature will clear heat and it will clear heat, especially in the lungs uh, because it is white in color. So expels wind dampness and damp heat. So you will see one of the main functions, it will help with abscess in lungs and intestines, okay? And it will help with B syndrome. B syndrome is uh, from uh, damp heat. So this will actually, uh, or wind damp, here's wind damp. So this will help with um, arthritis issues um, or painful joints, okay? That's called, in Chinese traditional medicine, it's called B syndrome. So the damp heat disorder and another interesting um, function has, it'll help with plantar warts, okay? So uh, Chinese ladies like to use this, like to cook this in soup and things because it thinks it helps with their beauty. And with sallow and yellow skin tone, it all should brighten up your um, skin to be more fair. And uh, it is a function similar to the corn silk uh, called yu mi xu in drain dampness. So sometimes we have puffy, um, eye, puffy eye bags or under my under eyes when we wake up. So that kind of shows we have a lot of edema, some fluid uh, in our body. So um, you can take uh, yi ren and um, corn silk, um, cooking some um, kind of uh, tea and it will drain some of the dampness from your body, okay? And in the raw form, in the raw form is cooler, okay? So it's cold or cooler. And it's just in the raw form, it helps with the damp heat or abscess. And the dry form, so sometimes if your stomach is not um, 
you know, uh, don't like cold food as much. So you can dry frying it and then make it into a tea. So this is less cold and will tonify the spleen. Okay. Next one in our group, first group is zhe xie. Okay. Zhe xie here, the zhe means water. Okay. And the water, if you think about water and kidney are related, so it means like the, the lake or, you know, a pond. Okay. So you think about zhe, if you see zhe, you think kidney. And xie here means to drain the excess. So immediately, if you look at property, it's cold and it will drain kidney fire. So that's that special function of the zhe xie. I will show you a picture of zhe xie. So this is zhe xie. It's a, a round disc, almost like it's a brown, a yellow round disc, okay? So zhe xie, also uh, you can think of as, as um, in the one of the most important um, Chinese uh, pure form, it's called liu wei di huang wan. This is um, a very popular um, uh, over-the-counter um, decoction. Um, so basically, it has three um, elements, three herbs that tonify, and three elements that are uh, three herbs that sedate. So zhe xie is one of uh, them that does the sedation or drain the excess from the kidney meridian because the liu wei di huang wan works on the kidney meridian and zhe xie is for the draining or sedating the excess um, fire of a kidney fire, okay? So next one. Okay, next one here is dong gua zi. Okay, dong gua zi is the seed of winter melon. I will show you a photo. Okay, if you look at it, it looks like, you know, a pumpkin seed, right? The white pumpkin seed. And this is a donggua, okay? And donggua is, inside is white. So you immediately think it maybe go to the lun. And these are the seed, okay? So donggua zi is the seed. Whenever you see zi, we'll go over here. So it's slightly cold. Okay, and goes to, like I said, it's white, so it goes to lung and small intestine. It clears lung and resolve phlegm. So it clears lung and resolve phlegm and drain dampness and discharge pus. So this is similar in the function of yi yi ren, where it um, helps the lung with abscess and also intestine abscess. So one thing that's a little bit different, you can see it, it helps leucoria. So leucuria here is um, basically, many ladies have it. It's a mild and odorless vaginal discharge uh, in either clear or milk color, milky color. So uh, by um, you know, using this herb or um, basically you can even cook uh, some, um, you know, the, the dong gua zi uh, in a soup or dong gua in a soup, it will um, drain the dampness because we think leucoria from is actually a result of damp heat. So since this clears, uh, dong gua is um, in the summer, you eat it to cool your body. So it clears the damp heat from your body. So it helps with leucoria. So again, dong gua is similar to yi yi ren in clears the abscess of lung and intestines. And since it's white, it clears lung and phlegm and drains dampness, discharge pus. So uh, if you want to compare the donggua with yi yi ren, yi yi ren and donggua both treat the pus and abscess of the lungs. And yi yi ren has a special function in the B syndrome, which is um, such as arthritis uh, from the wind damp. And donggua is help with leucuria, which is the female vaginal discharge, okay? Okay, so our next one is herbs that promote urination and unblock painful urination. In Chinese, it's called Lin syndrome. It's similar to um, a family of syndrome that's similar to UTI. So 
when you have urinary tract infection, you feel you have, um, you know, painful urination, you have burning urination, and you have sometimes bloody, and also uh, sometimes you have, um, as a kidney stone, if you have kidney stone, of course, it's also painful. So Lynn syndrome's not per to a particular disease, it's just a bunch of symptoms uh, that's similar to the UTI's, um, you know, symptoms. We call it group it together called Lynn syndrome. And if you can see, there is almost 12 different herbs here. It's a huge class. So I will go over each one of them um, briefly and show you what they look like. Okay, the first one in our group is called Ce Qian Zi. Okay, so here um, it is sweet and slightly cold. I will show you a photo. If you can look at it, Ce Qian Zi is a herb and the Zi means a seed. The seed of this herb is a black in color. This is Ce Qian Zi. And um, if you look at the zi, a lot of seed here in Chinese traditional medicine help with the eye, goes into the liver meridian. So the liver meridian is connected to our eyes. So if you look at uh, Ce Qian Zi, you think about uh, liver immediately because it helps with eyes, okay? And also, The qian here, it means to be the leader, to be the top. Okay, so what's on top the leader of all our internal organs? It's our lungs, right? So many herbs start with qian, uh, it's related to lungs. So if you look at qian is top leader related to lungs, it can be uh, bai qian, qian hu, and ce qian zi. So if you look at this word qian, a lot of times you think lung. So I have talked about two um, channels already. It's lung and liver, right? Liver connect to our eyes because zi means seed. Seed goes into our, um, you know, our, our eyes or our liver meridian. So we can see this is again, all this, all the herbs in this class that helps with uh, Lynn syndrome, it's always cold because Lynn syndrome is, again, it's like uh, similar to UTI, as I described before, and the cause of it, it's damp heat. So to calm the damp heat, you need uh, herbs that's uh, cool or uh, cold in nature. So if you look at this group of um, herbs, it's all cold in nature, okay? So if you see this group of herbs as cold, then you know it will help uh, drain the dampness and to help with um, urinary dysfunction. Um, and painful urination, okay? So again, it goes to the liver, lung, kidney, and bladder meridian. It promotes urination and clear heat, leach out dampness and stop diarrhea. And it, as I said, it clears lung and resolve uh, the phlegm and it brightens eyes because it goes to the liver meridian. So it's for any type of painful urinary dis, uh, dysfunction, it's lin. And uh, as it goes to the lungs, right? Because qian is lun. You think about it goes to the lun and it helps with cough, with uh, sputum. And also for eye disorders, due to the kidney deficiency and liver heat, okay? So seed brightens eyes, qian top leader, okay? So it, um, the reason it stops diarrhea, if you can think about if you have too much uh, dampness or water in your large intestine, right? And then you have a loose stool, right? So this actually diverges this moisture from the large intestine into your bladder. So you urinate out and therefore you dry up your feces and um, to stop the diarrhea. That's how it functions. Okay. Next one on our list is hua shi, okay, hua shi. Hua shi is a mineral. It is uh, similar to the talk powder or baby powder. And in Chinese, it's called uh, fei, 
fate uh, set. It's uh, in the summer you use it. So it's to treat uh, summer heat rash, fate zi fen. And uh, it, is to, it is cold in nature. So if you think you're using to help with um, summer rash, summer heat rashes, right? So it is um, to, it is cold in nature. And I will show you a photo of this. So if you look, this is Hua Shi. It's a mineral rock. It's in the magnesium family. And uh, this is, if you powder it, it looks like this. And uh, so basically it's hygroscopic where if you leave it out, it'll absorb moisture from air. So um, it, it's, cool, it's cold in nature and it will absorb the dampness from your body. Okay, so it absorbs dampness. And um, it also, since it's cold in nature, it helps the Ling syndrome. It helps the summer heat with dampness. And uh, one thing that's important about Hua Shi, it helps the skin lesions. So if you think about eczema or heat rash, so these are all, uh, if you think about eczema, it's oozing, like dampness, like oozing out um, liquid. And also it is uh, inflamed, right? It's usually red. So that means it has heat in it. So you use cold uh, herbs to help with the, um, the, the, the warm, um, the, uh, the heat, the, the damp heat situations, which it calls in the skin cause eczema and heat rash. Okay, our next herb is called chuan mu tong. Okay, whenever you see this word tong, as I said in the beginning, it means it has um, thorough passage. So the liquid can drain, the, the moisture can drain, okay? So we'll see several, three um, herbs that has tone inside. And a lot of times these herbs, the inner core, it's like a straw. It's, um, you can see it through, okay? So this is Chuan Mu Tong. And Mu Tong, you have to use with caution, okay? Because a large dose, will uh, cause acute uh, kidney failure. So uh, we typically don't use that. We use another herbs to substitute that, but I still uh, want to describe it because it's in part of the test. Uh, the property is bitter and cold. It enters the bladder, heart, and small intestine meridian. I will show you a picture of what Mu Tong look like. You can see it, why it's called Mu Tong. Okay, so if you look at it, right, it look, it's, it's like a wood, almost like a sponge, right? And you see all these little holes. So that's like the, what I was talking about into the soil, it, it goes through, okay? And Mu Tong, this, what does this remind you of? This almost reminds you of our milk duct, right? So Mu Tong, one function of the Mu Tong will help lactation, okay? Will in, uh, promote lactation, but no worries. There's another herb that's, uh, doesn't have any toxicity, will do the same thing. I will describe in a little bit, okay? So, so again, of course, this will uh, promote urination and drain heat because it's cold from the heart and it promotes lactation and blocks uh, the blood vessel. So this is something to remember, improves lactation and it reduces the heart fire. It goes in the heart meridian and it will help with irritability uh, with sore mouth or tongue and scanty urine. Those are the manifestation of the heart fire. And also, um, if you have too strong heart fire, you cannot sleep well at night. So it helps the painful urinary dysfunction as everything in this group is called the Lenz syndrome due to damp heat and uh, lactation. It also helps amenorrhea, which is absence of period. So it's more a female herb. It helps lactation and helps with absence of period. It also helps with B syndrome uh, in, the, uh, in the, our body. So B syndrome, again, it's arthritis-like syndromes. And um, this is cold in nature. It helps with uh, the heat, damp heat caused um, arthritis, okay? 
So the contraindication, so the dosage is very small, but most um, TCM doctors will not just prescribe this because still it has a contraindication, um, but it's at very high dose of 60 grams versus what typically use three to six, but um, TCM doctor will use with caution and they will substitute with the herbs in the next um, one I was going to explain. Okay, this is Tong Chao. You see another, the word Tong, right? It means it water passage through. And Chao means grass, okay? So you can use in place of the Mu Tong because if you see, it also promotes lactation, also promotes urination and clears the heart, okay? It is, uh, it doesn't have the, it also helps with dampness and painful uh, urinary dysfunction. So it has everything, the same function as Mouton, except maybe help with um, Anna Maria, the, um, the menses, uh, no, no period, but there's other herbs that will help that. It doesn't have to use Mouton. So I will show you a photo of this Tong Chao. Can you see that? That's almost like, you know, it's, it's an herb, but uh, when it's processed, it looks like a grass, a white grass. See the inside? It's hollow, right? It's hollow. So the water can drain through. It's like a straw. Okay. This is a tong chao. So we can use in place of mu tong. It helps what? <clears throat> you know, uh, lactation, right? Helps drain dampness from our body. <clears throat> So the next one is Den Xing Chao. Okay, the word Xing here, Xing here means heart. Okay, Chao means grass. Okay, so whenever you see the Xing here, you know it goes to the heart meridian. Okay, the 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 the, the, the inside. So it is slightly cold as everything in this class, and it goes to the heart, lung, stomach. Okay, so whenever it's cold, a little bit cold in nature, it's promote urination and leach out dampness and it clears the heart and relieves irritability. Like I said, the heart fire make you anxious and agitated and cannot sleep well. So this will help you calm down, okay? So it's used for the, again, painful, like everything in this class and helps insomnia. And it helps irritability in the children and children convert, uh, conversion due to the heart fire, okay? And seeing his heart, and tong is passage through. So you can you already have mu tong, tong chao, and tong xing chao, right? So these are the three herbs I just described. Everything has the word tong in it, so it's pass through. Okay. And I show you a photo of this. Okay, this is tong xing chao. Chao means grass, right? So this looks like grass and when it's processed, it's very look a lot like um, tong chao, right? But it's a little bit more skinnier. It's also white and it's probably hollow, hollow in um, nature. Okay, the next one, it's usually put side by side. These two have, uh, these two herbs have the very similar uh, property and similar actions, but they have you know one small difference. So this is uh, qu mai and bian xu. They are often used together. And qu mai, and it's bitter and cold, and same as bian xu, bitter and cold. It, qu mai enters the heart and small intestine meridian, and bian xu enters the bladder meridian. So both have the similar action of clear damp heat and promote urination, this is our, um, you know, Lin syndrome, right? As everything else in this class. And the difference between qu mai, qu mai is it will break blood stasis to promote menstruation and the Maria, as I mentioned before. Uh, so this helps with um, scanty period or no period and irregular menstruation. So we don't have to use mutong, we can use a, um, Inoculus qi mai, and this is very beautiful um, with purple flowers. I will show you what qi mai look like. 
So isn't that pretty? Uh, so basically these are the flowers and purple flowers and the when it's made into herbal, it's uh, grassy like. Okay, this is chimai. It helps with uh, female issues. So you think a pretty flower help with uh, female issues to promote menstruation, irregular uh, menstruation, okay? And bian xu, it helps with skin lesions due to itching or parasite. And I will show you what that looks like. So this is bian xu. It's a grass and uh, when dry, it looks like that. So it helps some, many people um, basically boil it and soak um, your itchy skin into, in it. Um, so this helps with um, itchy skin and parasites uh, caused uh, itchiness. So okay. Our next one is called Di Fu Zhi. Fu here means skin. Okay. So uh, automatically know it's probably something to treat your skin with. And it's very light. Zi, okay, zi here mean seed. Okay, so this is the food. It's very light in weight. It floats on top of the water if you put in water. And so um, you definitely need to uh, decoct with uh, cheesecloth, right, um, bag. And so this is Again, everything in this class is bitter. Uh, it's cold in nature. It acts on the bladder channel. It clears damp heat and promotes urination. And one special uh, thing, it stops itching. So we can use Di Fu Zi with what we just described Bian Xu together to stop itching. So they're often used together and um, in uh, topical treatments, okay? So um, it's damp heat related such as eczema, oozing, and itching. Because this is cold, so it helps with damp heat. Of course, it helps with our Lin syndrome as everything in this class does. I will show you a picture of Di Fu Zi. So this is Di Fu Zi, right? It's almost like a little very light ball. And this is a seed of Di Fu Zi, okay? So it's very, very light in weight too. And fu means, if you think about, if you throw this in the water, it'll float and it's like our skin, it's on the outside, right? It's, you know, so it, it goes to our skin and treats our skin issues. Okay, next one is shi wei, okay? Shi here, S-H-I, meaning rock or stone. This is a herb, uh, it's not a rock or mineral, but it's called shi wei because what does it does? It helps with stone Lin syndrome. Stone Lin syndrome is like kidney stone, okay? And also this herb, if I show you, it looks uh, more bulky and almost look like a, if you look at this shi wei, right? Because it's more like a square shaped, you know, um, if the leaf is more like, if you can think about 3D, almost like a little rock, right? And so this is Shi Wei. It is slightly cold and it cold herbs clears heat and promotes urination. And here it helps lungs and stop coughing, okay? So sometimes imagine a white, rock <laughs> so the white goes to the lens so even though this is not white but when i think about shui i imagine maybe a you know uh, or the kidney stone is a, a white rock so the white uh, prompts me to think it it's it goes to the lens and stop coughing and the other thing it's very important you need to remember it's cools blood and stops bleeding so if you think about if you have past kidney stone you may have some um, blood um you know, along with it. So it cools the blood, stop bleeding. So it helps with a several Lin syndrome. It helps with stone, heat, and blood Lin. So it's um, urine, urinary dysfunction that um, have, have issues with too much heat or could cause uh, the bloody urine, or it can have the kidney stone, uh, anything stone issues, okay? So again, it helps Lin clear heat coughing 
and for blood urine. So this one is uh, important to remember. That's their function. And now we'll go to next one. Okay, next one is called fishie. It's bitter and it's neutral. So since it's bitter, it drains down, right? So it also, since it drains down and bitter, it separates the pure from the turbid. So the turbid moisture or liquid will go down and the pure will rise up. So it separates the pure from the turbid. Expels wind dampness and relaxes sinews. So this one, Pixie goes to the liver meridian. Liver meridian is um, have to do with wind, wind dampness and with sinews. I will show you what they look like. <clears throat> this is Pixie. So this is the plant and this is what it looks like, okay? So it clears the heat from the skin. And one important thing is it also helps with the Lin syndrome, but this Lin syndrome is actually the protein you urine because it separates the pure from the turbid. So the turbid you can think about as, um, you know, urine vaginal discharge or turbid dampness in the lower gel. Uh, whenever you have a uh, protein urea, your urine may be a little bit uh, cloudy in color, or if you have a lot of uh, bubbles in your urine. So this actually helps with that. Uh, it's for wind dampness and damp heat pain, uh, B syndrome. It also helps with skin lesions, eczema, the damp heat, because it is uh, bitter in nature. So it drains the, the skin B syndrome. And if you look at B, she has a B, you can relate, it's, even though it's a different word, but it sounds the same as B syndrome. So this prompts you as B is same as B syndrome. So it helps with damp heat related B syndrome. Okay, next one is Hai Jing Sha. Okay, Hai means ocean, Jing means golden, Sha means sand. It's golden sand from the ocean. However, this is a plant. It's not uh, from the ocean. I will show you, it's actually very beautiful. So this is Hai Jing Sha. It's like fern looking plant, but after the process, uh, it's called Hai Jing Sha. It does look like the golden sand, right? From the ocean. So interestingly, many ocean things have a salty taste and this is also salty taste. <clears throat> so if you look at here, it's sweet, salty and cold. Whenever you see an herb have a salty property, it basically broke it breaks down anything that's tough, like a stone, it'll break down. Think about it'll break down the kidney stone into sand-like material so it can pass, okay? And it cold, cold also helps with damp heat. So it acts on the bladder and small intestine meridian. <clears throat> it promotes urination and block painful urination with the Lin syndrome. So you can see it helps with urinary dysfunction with hot and stone and blood. And gall, gall is um, what I describe as protein urea, Lin syndrome, and also helps with painful urinary tract issues. So it is for edema and urinary difficulty due to damp heat. The coffee and cheese cloths because it's very loose, very loose and fine. So when you think Hai Jing Sha, Sha means sand. So you think immediately it break the stone, Lin, you know, kidney stone or anything into a sand like, so it can pass. And this is also uh, yellow in color, right? So it helps um, with uh, the damp heat. Okay, the next one is Han Fang Ji. We show you a photo. Okay, see in many of these um, herbs that drain dampness, you see this is almost look like dried up, you know, orange slice, right? See all these uh, holes in here. And that's promote drainage, right? It's also concentric rings. It helps with draining the moisture, okay? So Han Fang Ji is bitter, acrid, cold, okay? So it helps with wind dampness and alleviates pain. It promotes urination and reduce edema. 
It's for heat, damp heat type, as everything else in this class, and helps the edema. Ascitis. Ascitis is a peritoneal cavity. You have a fluid retention, so it helps with that. And also, it helps the dampness accumulate in the lower jaw. Okay, lower jaw is our uh, stomach abdominal area. So it helps with our uh, peritoneal cavity, anything the, to drain the dampness. This is Han Fang Ji. Okay, so the next uh, class, the final class is that transport dampness and relieve jaundice. Okay, these two, uh, Ying Chen and Jin Tian Cao are the two main herbs to help with jaundice. And in that, the first one, Ying Chen, is the one that helps with jaundice the most. So this is three star because it helps uh, with jaundice. I will show you a photo. Okay, this is Ying Chen Hao. Okay, you see this? Again, it's kind of fur-like, fern-like, and this is Ying Chen. Okay, it's pretty light in weight as well. Okay, so this is bitter. You know, when you think about bitter, it drains down, right? It's slightly cool. It acts on liver, spleen, especially gallbladder meridian and stomach. So when you think about gallbladder, you think about a bile produced from the gallbladder, right? And so what does the bile do? If there's a blockage or things not functioning well, it causes jaundice. So this goes to the bladder, a gallbladder meridian helps with jaundice. It clears um, damp heat and to relieve jaundice and clear heat release exterior. So it's for the summer heat or warm febrile disease. Uh, warm febrile disease is like, um, you know, infectious uh, disease, okay? Um, so it's a main herb to treat jaundice. That's something we have to remember. Okay, and the next one, Jin Tian Cao, its functions are very similar. It's not as potent as uh, Ying Chen, but I'll show you a picture. Okay, this is called Jing Qian Cao. Okay, do you see that? It's like a golden penny, right? <clears throat> if you think about this, if you imagine this is yellow, it looks like a little coin. Okay, Jing Qian means golden money, a golden coin grass. Okay, so you can see that. So, um, so Jing Tian, again, is golden penny and it's leopard marking, right? So when you see the word Jing means golden, Qian means penny, Cao means grass. Jing, what's golden color? Golden color is yellow color. So yellow is related to jaundice. Okay, that's how I remember it. So the Jing Tian means jaundice. Okay, that's how I remember. And it's slightly cold works on the gallbladder meridian again, and liver and gallbladder are always together, usually in kidney and bladder are to drain our water. So those work together. So transform dampness and remove jaundice and promote urination and painful urination and reduce toxicity. So again, this is for jaundice and it's for hot stoning. So to help with painful urination due to kidney stones as well. And one interesting, is it helps the abscess and snake bites, okay? So if you think about, you know, leopard and you think about, you know, snake, so both are in the animal family. And if some of the snakes actually have the leopard marking, like Jing Qian marking into it. So you can relate that to think it helps with snake bite and abscess, okay? So um, these are the herbs that in this class, that drains uh, the dampness um, and promote the water passage. So once again, we review, we have three um, different classes of these herbs, right? So, um, so the first one, is to promote urination, reduce edema and swelling. These herbs are typically bland and sweet in nature and maybe a little bit cooling, but not too cold, right? Um, that include fooling, 
Zhu Lin, those are our two mushrooms, and Zhe Xie, that helps us with the kidney fire, and Yi Ren, that helps with, um, with resolve um, not only the drain dampness, also with uh, lung and intestine abscess. Okay, and so these are our first family. And so the next family is help with us with Lin syndrome, right? And these Lin syndromes, all these herbs are cold in nature. So the cold will help with damp heat because Lin syndrome, again, is urinary uh, UTI issues like, um, or kidney stone or uh, um, urine, urine with bloody uh, urine. Uh, these are Lin syndrome, so it's usually uh, it's damp heat cause. So damp heat, we use, you use cold um, or cool uh, herbs. And in here, a uh, tianzi is a seed. When it's a seed, it helps with our eyesight and liver. You see that that's something special. And uh, hua shi, hua shi is a mineral. It absorbs moisture from the surroundings, right? And it also helps with our skin eczema. And that they have we have three tong, um, mu tong, tong cao. Um, these these two tong means it basically drains, right? And mu tong is a little bit more uh, have to use with caution, and but you can substitute with tong cao. Okay, and these both of these two, if you remember, it helps with uh, lactation, um, because the way it looks like a straw. Or it, it passed through, right? And this one looked like almost milk duct. Um, it also helped with um, this, this mutong help with anomaria and um, tong cao, you know. So here, next one is den xing cao. Xing here means the heart. So it helps the heart meridian and um, to calm down the mind and as well as drain the moisture, right? The next one we have chu mai and bian shu. These two are very similar. The only difference is, is what the shu mai. Remember, it's beautiful um, purple flower. It helps with uh, female issues with um, menstruation or amenorrhea with scanty or no period. And bian shu, it's more like just grass. <laughs> it helps with um, skin issues or parasite issues that you can use topically as well. And shi wei rock, right? Shi rock rock helps with stone lin syndrome, okay? And di fu zi, very light. Zi means um, seed, it flows on top. It helps with our skin uh, itchiness. And bi xie, it's, remember bi, bi helps with bi syndrome, right? Okay, and of course, all these, all these things help with lin syndrome. And hai jing sha, sha means sand. So golden sand, what does it help, right? So if it's, Golden sand, the uh, the yellow, the the golden and the sand. Sand breaks down. Stone breaks down into sand, so it helps with stone lin syndrome. Okay, and then it's han fang ji. Remember, it's almost like ring like, um, you know, orange dried orange uh, slices. So it drains uh, moisture as well through these uh, holes. Okay, and the next one, last but not least. The two herbs in this class relieve jaundice. One is yin chen hao or yin chen. Okay, this is the most important to relieve jaundice. And the other one is jin qian cao, the golden penny grass. Okay, so yellow, jin, yellow, golden helps with jaundice and yin chen helps with jaundice most. Okay, so this is a conclusion of my first video on the herbs that treat dampness and um, uh, uh, edema or, and also the herbs that um, causes urinary dysfunction. So thank you for watching and I see you in my next video. Bye-bye.